welcome to the Blindfold Chess Podcast. The Blindfold King, Grandmaster Timur Gureyev, is the current Guinness World Record holder for the most simultaneous blindfolded chess games played at the same time. Originally from Uzbekistan, he won the Under-14 Asian Championship at the age of 12. He became a Grandmaster at the age of 15. But his major claim to fame is becoming the Blindfold King. In December of 2016, in Las Vegas, Nevada, Timor played 48 games with a blindfold on at the same time. The previous record was 46 games set by Mark Lang in 2011. The exhibition started at 8.30 a.m. on Saturday and ran until 3.39 a.m. on Sunday, which is 19 hours and 9 minutes interrupted by a 30-minute fire alarm. His previous record was 33 boards in 2013. I I guess what's another 13 boards? The key criteria for the record to count is, number one, reach a 80% win percentage. Number two, all games must start at the same time. Number three, he played half his games with white and half with black. Number four, his opponents must be of decent strength. This match, the average rating was 1,700. As a result, he won 35 games, drew 7, and lost 6 for a win percent of 80.2%. During the entire exhibition, Timor was riding an exercise bike to get energy. He told Chess.com after the event he applies a technique called a memory palace, which involved translating chess moves into images and placing those images in 48 mental rooms, but to also, quote, trust his brain to figure out the hard stuff, end quote. He would assign abstract concepts to keep the games straight. Another quote of his, quote, if it's board number 13, maybe I'll play something risky because it sounds unlucky. On board 21, that's like blackjack, so it's a kind of gamble, end quote. Outside of the event, Timor lives quite an interesting life. He won the North American Open in 2012 to qualify for the 2013 U.S. Championship, where he tied for third. In 2018, he won the 2018 U.S. Open to qualify for the 2019 U.S. Championship, where he tied for ninth out of 12th, including showing up late for a round because he was playing Blitz online. Timor is also a skilled skydiver with close to 150 solo jumps. There are several videos of him jumping out of a plane with a chessboard for a Chess Life magazine cover. Gureyev is actively involved in the chess scenes of Southern California, Texas, and his current home of Kansas. Today we are going to be looking at two games from his record-breaking day. Both of these were played at the same time, however we will look at them one at a time. The first game will be Thomas Brownscombe versus Timur Gureyev. Now, if we're ready, let's begin. One pawn to e4. Pawn to e5. Two knight f3. Knight c6. Three bishop b five. Pawn to a six. Four bishop a four. Knight f six. Five castle kingside. Bishop c five. Six rook e one. Knight g four. Seven rook e two. Castle kingside. Eight pawn to c three. 
Pawn to d5. Nine, pawn e captures d5. Pawn to e4. Somehow, between all of the boards that he's playing, he manages to come up with this tactical shot where both knights are now under attack. He is willing to give up his knight in order to crack into the white king side. Ten, pawn d captures c6. Pawn e captures f3. Eleven, pawn g captures f3. Knight captures h2. With his king safe and with a substantial lead in development, Timur is starting to sacrifice material in order to get at the white king. If white plays king captures h2, do you see black's follow-up? That would be queen h4 check, followed with bringing the bishop into h3 check, and then there will be a mate somewhere on the king's side. 12. Rook e5. Queen f6. Thirteen, rook captures c5. Knight captures f3 check. Fourteen, king g2. Bishop h3 check. Between the bishop on c5, the knight that was on h2, and now the bishop on h3, Timur has tried to sacrifice three different pieces in order to get at the white king. If the king captures on h3 this time around, do you see the follow-up? 15. King captures h3. Queen h4 check. 16. King g2. 17, king f1. Knight h2 check. 18, king e1. Rook f2 e8 check. White resigns. Even if white were to give up the rook to e5 or the queen on e2, that will not stop the mate that will be occurring on e2. It would be hard to keep track of all of the pieces that you're sacrificing in that game, because if you misplace one piece, then you take your winning attack, and now you're just losing. The second game that we're going to be looking at is Timur Gureyev versus Shenlong Wu from the same event. Now, if we're ready, let's begin. One, pawn to e4. Pawn to e5. Two, pawn to d4. Pawn e captures d4. 3, pawn to c3. Knight f6. Four, pawn to e5. Queen e7. Five, pawn c captures d4. Pawn to d6.
6. Knight f3. Knight c6. Seven, Bishop B five. Bishop G four. Eight, Castle Kingside. This is the second game that we've looked at where Timor has done a nice job of getting his king out of the center of the board early. We will soon see Black have some issues with the king stuck in the middle of the board for the second straight game because the bishop on f8 doesn't have any good squares and castling on the queen side is a bit too dangerous at the moment. Pawn d captures e5. Nine, pawn d captures e5. Knight d7. Ten, knight c3. Knight d captures e5. Eleven, knight captures e5. Uh-oh. Was this an instance where Timor got his moves mixed up on the different boards? Why else would he just leave his queen hanging like that? Can you see what his plan is? Bishop captures d1. Twelve. Knight captures c6. Pawn b captures c6. Thirteen, bishop captures c6 check. King d8. Fourteen, rook captures d1 check. King c8. Fifteen, bishop captures a eight. Once the smoke clears on this five-move combination that started with Timor sacrificing his queen, he is up a rook and two pieces for that queen, and a much safer king compared to black. Queen h4. Sixteen, pawn to g3. Queen h3. Seventeen, bishop e3. Bishop d6. Eighteen, knight b5. Black resigns. Black resigned after knight b5. It's a little hard to find any type of plan for black. White is just going to start consolidating material, getting rid of the bishop, getting the rooks to the middle of the board, and then using the bishop pair and the two rooks on the exposed king to destroy black. It really is incredible to see how much information Timor can keep straight in his head at one time. And with that, we will end this episode of the Blindfold Chess Podcast, and we will also end Season 1 of the podcast. Thank you everyone who has downloaded over the past 28 episodes, and stay tuned for Season 2, where we will continue to work on our blindfold skills and look at the games of the Masters. Thank you.